Hello and welcome to the Pixel 8 Games review of Get Dexter. The year is 1986 and the Anglo-French Treaty on the Channel Tunnel has just been signed. French newspaper Le Parisien also caused nationwide concern on April Fool's Day by declaring that the Eiffel Tower would soon be moved to nearby Disneyland. The biggest impression the French made to a teen computer geek that year happened to land on England's shores bearing the title of Get Dexter. Born as Crafton and Zunk in its homeland, this isometric 3D game built on the success of its 1985 forebearers Night Law and Alien 8 by bringing with it a newfound collection of fresh visuals and appealing humour to the CBC. A nation of AMS geeks were heard to cry out, At last! Yeah! Ooh! 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 This is one of those rare Amstrad games that knocked me away for six the first time it appeared on my screen, delivering lifelike textures and an enriched colour palette that invigorated the landscape beautifully. Compared to many of the monochrome Amstrad titles at the time, it seemed by comparison that the developers had somehow snuck in and crammed an Amiga motherboard into my machine. And on to the mission, well... It seems that Dexter is on the hunt around various rooms to seek out an array of scientists who each hold on to one digit of a secret code combination. But it's not like just a code to a locker with an old pair of socks and a half-eaten cheese roll in it, oh no. It seems that all galactic life will be able to continue once Dexter is able to attain and copy the full code to let the good scientists at his end have their way with it. The trick to eight computer games is not to allow a perfectly implausible plot to ruin your experience. Joining Dexter on his exploits is his trusty scooter, a head attached to a foot. To get Scooter's help, Dexter can whistle for his attention. However, I personally find Scooter more of a hindrance than a help. He has a habit of getting in the way and at the most inopportune moments, such as when you really need to get ahead of a scientist to stop him raising the alarm. Plus, the high-pitched noise he makes when you're stuck in a corner with him could make your ears bleed. But there's otherwise so much to love about this game. As you navigate the rooms, you can prevent your enemies, which includes a pernicious nurse, a punk, and several chromed up robots, from reducing your health. This can be done by pushing certain obstacles in their way that they cannot clear, or by locating items that will permanently take out the robots. The robot's demise is beautifully rendered as they disintegrate into a puddle or a cloud of smoke. You've got to recall that when this game was released, this animation on its own looked quite phenomenal. There are colour coded doors that Dexter needs to find the equivalent keycard to open so that he can progress further along, and this might involve having to search for them from afar. However, as you can only carry one item at a time, then this means you will need to plan ahead a little to ensure a safe and painless journey. A sense of humour is always on display, and this is no more apparent than when you have to bounce up and down on hospital beds to reach up high to pick up an object. But don't get too carried away as the bed is liable to break permanently. This is so humorously animated with an equally amusing sound effect to boot. Get Dexter is a complete gem from the bygone days of home computing and it's also an all time Amstrad classic. As such, it should be right there at the top of your CPC collection. Now. <laughs>